Good afternoon. Let's get started. Item number 1A, approval of the minutes of the meeting of April 4th, 2011. I'd like to move that. May I have a second, please? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 May, abstention. Item to approve. Item number 1B, policy calendar number one. Graduate School and University Center School of Professional Studies, MS in Information Systems. Okay. This professional master's degree will be offered fully online, making it the second fully online graduate program at CUNY. The first one being the MS in Business Management and Leadership at the School of Professional Studies. It prepares students for addressing complex business and social problems through the theories, tools, and techniques of information systems. Students will have a choice between pursuing a general information systems program or specializing in urban sustainability. The program aims to equip students for a variety of technical and managerial positions such as information systems analyst, software application engineer, and so on. Questions? There are no, no questions. There are no questions. I'd like to move the item. May I have a second? Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Nays? Abstention? Item carries. Item number 1B2, Hunter College, three programs in dance. MFA in dance, yes. MA in dance education, BA, MA in dance, yes. dance and dance education. Okay, this proposal encompasses the registration of three interconnected degree programs. An MFA in dance focusing on performance, choreography, and teaching artistry, a master's in dance education focusing on preparation for pre-K to 12 teaching, which is for initial and professional certification, and a combined BAMA building on the existing strength of an undergraduate program in dance leading to teacher certification. The programs are mutually reinforcing, with eight required courses being cross-listed among the programs. There are no graduate programs in dance, either MFA or MA, elsewhere at CUNY. The development of these programs has been supported by an outside donation amounting to $1 million. Are there any questions? If not, I'd like to move the items. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Nays, abstentions, motion carries. Item number 1B3, <coughs> New York City College of Technology, BS in Radiological Science. This program builds on an existing associate's degree program in radiologic technology and medical imaging that has been offered at the New York City College of Technology for almost 40 years. It is designed to provide a pathway to a baccalaureate for radiologic technolo technologists, radiographers, nuclear medicine technologists, radiation therapists, and sonographers um, who are already holding an associate degree or certificate facilitating their career advancement. This program will be unique to CUNY. All of the needed equipment for this program is already available because of the exi existing associates program. This baccalaureate primarily adds liberal arts courses to the associate's degree, plus some advanced medical imaging courses. Only certified radiologic technicians will be admitted, and they will be prepared for advanced practice and leadership positions. Questions? Not, let's move the item. May I have a second? Second. second. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Nay. Abstention? Motion carries. Item number 1B4, Borough Manhattan Community College, AS in Mathematics. Mr. Chair, um, could you give us time if the, the documents don't load yeah, quickly. quickly enough okay. for us to even from Okay, so read. Let's, move, let's move slower on this item. I'm trying to get okay. back to Okay, we, we are on item number 1B4, Borough Manhattan Community College, AS in Mathematics and Sciences for Secondary Education. Yes. 
The resolutions are quicker, but the documents themselves are a little slower. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I will slow down a bit so that everybody can look at it. I don't have either at this point. So. <laughs> Just think of it. On the benefit of doing that, we're saving a lot of trees. Yes. Because of the lack of paper. Are we all okay. set? No. Are we okay? No. Still on loading? What are they on? Free G or the Wi Fi? They're on our wireless for other wireless. Yes. Have to do what? Okay, we're ready. You ready? Okay. We're ready? Okay. Okay. Did you said the name of Right, I said that. Okay. This program, mm -hmm. uh, this is now the BMCC AS in Mathematics and Sciences for Secondary Education. This program provides students with a solid background in liberal arts and sciences, enabling them to transfer to a baccalaureate program and pursue the initial certification in secondary education. Each of the four tracks, Mathematics, Biology, Physics, and Chemistry, has been articulated with a corresponding four-year program at one of the CUNY senior colleges. Okay. Questions? Not. Let's move the item. May I have a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, nays, abstentions? <coughs> item number 1B5, Hostos Community College, AAS in Game Design. The proposed curriculum, oh, do you have it? It's okay? Yes. Thank okay. You. <laughs> okay. The proposed curriculum will prepare graduates for entry level jobs in the rapidly expanding entertainment software industry. The program emphasizes the use of industry standard technology and media required for a design career in business and industry. This program will be unique at CUNY. It is envisaged that in the future it will articulate with the baccalaureate program in game design currently under development at New York City College of Technology. Sounds good. Yeah, well, That's good. Yeah, Let's move the item then. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Nays, abstentions. Motion carries. Item number 1B6, okay. La Guardia Community College AS in theater. This program was developed on the basis of a popular concentration within the liberal arts program. It prepares students for transfer into a wide range of four-year liberal arts or fine arts programs. An articulation with Queens College's program in drama and theater has been signed. The college has sufficient faculty expertise as well as facilities for staging theater productions. No questions? Let's move the item. May I have a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. <coughs> aye. Nays, abstentions. Item number 1B7, John Jay College, BA in Law and Society. This proposed program replaces a major in legal studies, which is being phased out, with a structured interdisciplinary curriculum focusing on the study of legal institutions and their role in political and social change. Students will be prepared for graduate study in a variety of disciplines, including political science, sociology, history, and law, as well as for entry to careers in public service, judicial administration, and for employment with nonprofit organizations. I would like to move that. Okay. <laughs> I would like, like to show a that. member of the faculty okay. of the college that's proposing this Thank wonderful you. major. Right. Second. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Nays, abstentions. Motion carries. Item number 1B8, John Jay College, BA in Philosophy. This program proposal is part of John Jay's transformation into a senior college with an array of traditional liberal arts majors. This major will offer students a solid background for further graduate or professional study. The college already has the necessary faculty expertise. Mr. Chair, I would like to move that one. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's right, a wonderful the record, proposal. Sean, we have hundreds of minors in philosophy. Okay. Move the item. Is there any second? Second. second? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Nays, abstentions? Motion carries. Number, item number 1B9, 
Queens College BA in Middle Eastern Studies. This liberal arts major will introduce students to Middle Eastern studies through the study of languages, Arabic, Hebrew, Farsi, and Turkish, as well as literature, civilization, and history, and prepare students for graduate or professional studies. This is the first such program at CUNY and responds to national demand. The U.S. Department of Education recognizes the need not only for more speakers with fluency in Arabic and other Middle Eastern languages, but also graduates with area studies knowledge of this region. Discussions, questions? If not, let's move the item. I'll move it. Second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Abstentions? Item carries. Number 1B10, Queensboro Community College, Hunter College, do joint AAS BS in nursing. This program provides a seamless transfer of associate level nursing graduates to a baccalaureate nursing program. It is the first such program in what is expected to be a series of collaborative programs across the university. Such programs are very important because increasingly hospitals and other employers will only hire nurses who have baccalaureate degrees. Discussion? Question. The, um, it states in the resolution that there is a, a, a unique opportunity to uh, recruit and attract individuals of Hispanic uh, descent. Can you just tell me a little bit more what's the mechanism for that, please? Um, <laughs> Who is here from Queensboro who could address? Um, oh. We have hired a student. Oh, could you come to the table and identify yourself, please? Uh, speak into the mic. You have to speak oh, okay. into the mic. Okay. <laughs> I have a pretty big voice. Okay. Anne Marie Menendez, chairperson of the nursing department at Queensboro Community College. We have hired a student success advocate that is working with us to help um, recruit these folks, to provide mentoring and support um, when they're in the program. And they will, that, that person will connect and be liaison between Queensboro and um, Hunter to support them. So, How many students are you talking about? Well, we, it, we don't know exactly how many. Um, our numbers have been a little bit higher. Um, Hispanics are underrepresented in all the health fields. Um, last semester we had 7%. Sometimes we have up to 21% of Hispanics. Um, so the number will change according to... Um, they're quali who's qualified to come into the program. But we believe that when we have these students, the mentoring will be important and the connection between the two colleges is support across both campuses. I think it's a very important effort. Um, I would like uh, to review the mechanisms that we have in place to see if we can disseminate that learning to other programs later. Thank you very much for taking that initiative. Thank you, Tracy. Any other questions? If not, let's move the item. Move it. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Nays, abstentions? <coughs> item carries. Number 1B11. <laughs> right. There's so many items. <laughs> Brooklyn College School of Education, creation of the departments of early childhood education, art education, childhood mm -hmm. education, special education, secondary education, school psychology, counseling, and leadership. Okay, the proposed creation of four new departments is in line with the ongoing institutional reorganization at Brooklyn College, which puts an emphasis on a clear role for schools in the campus structure. Historically, the School of Education has served as a single department. This arrangement is no longer adequate in view of the large number of students and the variety of degree programs offered. Therefore, Brooklyn College wishes to create four separate departments, with the School of Education continuing as the administrative unit overseeing the four <coughs> departments. The faculty members have chosen their respective departments. This reorganization is resource neutral, and it has been approved by the Brooklyn <coughs> Policy Council. Okay. Discussions? If not, let's move the item. Can I have a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Nays, abstentions, motion. Item carries. Number 1B12, Resolution on Amendments to the Academic Integrity Policy. The existing 2004 CUNY Policy on Academic Integrity addresses situations in which students violate principles of academic integrity by cheating, plagiarism, or falsification of academic records. 
The amendments are necessary to bring the policy up to date with changes in technology and legal requirements and to provide additional clarity for campuses. It should be noted that the new amendments afford additional due process for students who deny allegations of academic dishonesty. Any questions? Yes. Karen? You want us to move it first so we could discuss it? Yeah. Sure. Let's move the I'll move first. it. Second. Okay. Discussion? Yes. In the proposed new uh, 3.2. 3.2. Okay. Keep on. Um, the language is, and I'd like to say that um, uh, Jay Weiser, Professor at Baruch, who's a member of our UFS Executive Committee, has worked with Vice Chancellor Schaefer, but I haven't had a chance to, and so um, I'd like to raise uh, two issues. Uh, one is the new, <coughs> proposed new 3.2. It says faculty members shall report all incidents they consider to be academic dishonesty on a faculty report form in substantially the same format as the sample annexed to this policy and shall submit the form to the college's academic integrity officer. That's new language. Now, I read this in two possible ways, and the ambiguity, ambiguity um, troubles me. I, one possible way of reading this is that if a faculty member reports an incident that uh, the person believes to be an issue of academic dishonesty, then the faculty member must use a specific form, the form annexed to the policy. But another way of reading it is that faculty members shall report every incident. Well, I, I don't think the, the last interpretation is supported by the language. It says they shall report all <coughs> incidents they consider to right. be academic dishonesty, which obviously means that it's a matter of their academic discretion whether to report because they think it's uh, 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 academic dishonesty, or if they don't, they don't have to report. No, 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 no. Of course, if a person thinks that it's not an issue of academic dishonesty, they wouldn't report it as an issue of <coughs> academic dishonesty. What I read this as saying, um, that this is capable of being read as if a faculty member believes a student has engaged in an activity that the faculty member considers to be academic dishonesty, the faculty member must report it, that there's no discretion. And I think there has to be discretion <coughs> because there are all levels of academic dishonesty from a you know, freshman um, cutting and pasting something because the student has not yet quite learned the concept of plagiarism and attribution and quoting to someone who plagiarizes, plagiarizes a master's thesis. The way it's written, it takes away discretion. No, and I, I, so I'd I, like us to correct the language if that's not the intent. No, that, that, if that is the intent, I think is what you mean. But that's not the intent to take away discretion. The discretion no, I mean, is with the faculty. All right, so can we just change it to when faculty members report incidents of academic dishonesty, they shall use the faculty report form in substantially the same format as the sample annexed to this? I don't think that change is necessary. You know, th this matter was before the University Faculty Senate Executive Committee months ago. I met with Professor Weiser, who we went over it. I sent revisions. Uh, it's true I didn't meet personally with you, Professor Kaplowitz, um, but I certainly was dealing with the leadership of the Executive Committee of the University Faculty Senate for the many, many months. Professor Weiser called me about this for the first time about a week ago and <clears throat> told me that in his view, the language didn't require changing. He thought that your concerns, while understandable, were not founded in the language and that therefore, uh, in his view, and he agreed with me, 
uh, no change in the language was necessary. Um, I, I really don't think in light of, of uh, the process that we are used to using uh, for these kinds of uh, resolutions that amendments made at the committee uh, at the last minute um, uh, are um, yeah, easily dealt with. Uh, and uh, in any event, I, I don't think it's necessary to accomplish what you want to accomplish, uh, which is it's now part of the record uh, that the discretion remains with faculty members. And if there is an incident that is in some sense trivial or can be easily dealt with uh, in another way, the faculty member maintains that discretion. Um, if I could just uh, ask, I, I think that, that um, Professor Kaskowitz, that the concern that you have is satisfied when you look at the statement, uh, the incidents they consider to be academic dishonesty, which to me, you know, uh, gives the realm of, of discretion that I think that you're looking for. No, it's, it's the shell report that takes away discretion. Um, I would like to, I mean, talk about last minute. We have two additional items on the agenda that we received on Friday. So I would like, because people, faculty and students and deans all around the university will not have access to this discussion a year from now and know that this, there's discretion for faculty. So I'd like to move an um, amendment to this uh, 3.2, whereby it would read, if faculty mem when faculty members <coughs> report an incident that they consider to be academic dishonesty, they shall uh, use the faculty report form in, in substantially the same format as the sample next to the policy. So I'd like to move that amendment. A second for this amendment? Second. Okay. Discussions? Uh, I, Professor Kapwitz is, I, I think, dealing with the fact that sometimes it could be an academic dishonesty, substantial academic dishonesty, and the professor, the, the, uh, the person involved does not want to report it. Mm -hmm. And this sort of doesn't give them that discretion. If it's significant, it could, she's saying it could be significant and I still don't want to report it. Mm -hmm. and, See, and, and, and what, why is the non-reporting of that something that's important to <coughs> preserve? Because faculty members face decisions of discretion every single day in the classroom. I'm such a faculty member, and I'm saying that this change is necessary. And I hope you respect my position at the university as a member of the faculty who teaches not just in the classroom, but who has been teaching for many, many, many years. And from that perspective, I'm asking you to respect my expertise as a member of the faculty and approve this amendment. Could it be accomplished with the words at the faculty member's discretion? If, add four words and then leave the rest of the paragraph the same? At the faculty member's discretion. It says, it says discretion, in it. I mean, unless I'm reading it wrong. Uh, I, the, the statement is in there. I think that I'm only adding four words. I'm adding when, if, if a faculty member reports, I'm only adding, I'm leaving the <laughs> sentence, I'm just adding, if a faculty member reports an incident that the faculty right, member so consists of the that academic, works, that works. that's all I'm saying, two words. There's another consideration here. Um, reporting an um, incident of academic dishonesty or lack of academic integrity is time consuming for the faculty member. It can also have aversive consequences for the faculty member because they get involved in all kinds of, uh, they can get involved in all kinds of things. Therefore, there is an incentive to faculty not to report. Um, and there are, unfortunately, cases where students say, I've never done this before, I will never do this again. Um, and unfortunately, that is not true. And if the case is not reported, there's no way to track that. And so you have a situation where um, it may be, um, faculty may not be reporting, not because of their discretion of thinking that there's a good reason, and, and they may not know all the reasons, 
but because of the being an incentive not to report. So let's and that's why many universities have made it a requirement that every incident be reported. So Vice Chancellor Logue, you're saying there's no discretion. You're disagreeing with Vice Chancellor Schaefer. He's saying there is discretion. Well, right. no, as, it, as I understood I, what you there said There is discretion, but I was talking about significant incidents. Right. I understood you to say that there was no discretion not to report a minor incident. And my answer was geared to that comment, which is I thought there was uh, discretion. Now, as a result of the colloquy with uh, Trustee Sutton, I now understand you to mean the issue is discretion not to report a serious or significant uh, um, uh, such uh, incident. And on that, um, I find myself in agreement with uh, Executive Vice Chancellor Logue that there is a price to be paid when faculty members <coughs> exercise their discretion not to report serious incidents perhaps because of the burden involved, which is understandable, um, but it, it, it results in some, some serious consequences for the college and for the university when that occurs. Well, then clearly this is not clear. It's ambiguous. We don't distinguish in this 3.2 whether we're talking about substantial or insubstantial, significant or insubstantial. It's a statement about any perceived act of academic dis, uh, uh, um, dishonesty. If I may, um, as a student, this is how I interpret it. Um, the uh, member shall report the incident uh, on a faculty report form, mm -hmm. right? So now it's written down, okay, and uh, shall submit the form, all right, but then it is followed by the sentence saying that there is discretion. So my, uh, the first way that I read it was that it was on the form and then the professor had the discretion went, uh, to submit it, which is the language there, to make a determination triggering submission of a faculty report form. Um, my, uh, my student opinion is that you should um, my recommendation to move it, the discretion at the front of this first. Put the discretion at the beginning of this. Um, okay. Otherwise, it's saying at the very beginning that you must report everything. Yeah. All right, so that's my student, Layman. Uh, I think that's a good suggestion, but, I, but I'd like to make sure I hmm? understand where Professor Kaplowitz wants to go then with what would become the second sentence. Um, it seems to me that there it's not just a wording difference, but also mm -hmm. a substantive difference. Absolutely. And that um, I, I would have no problem, I don't know how the trustee, other trustees feel, but as a council, I would have no problem in clarifying the language to say that there's discretion if after the meeting with the student, the faculty member concludes that in his or her best judgment, there is a significant uh, um, uh, incident of academic dishonesty that they shall report um, uh, and that doesn't sound to me like it's going as far as you want it to go and so I'm, I'm just trying to understand what the amendment here w uh, would be uh, and and then to see if it can <coughs> be drafted in well, accordance with that <coughs> goal. It seems to me the principle here is that is that if there is a significant case of academic dishonesty, it that the faculty member must report it. That is an the maintenance of academic integrity is an institutional interest. It, an individual faculty member also has the interest, but it's uh, but cases need to be adjudicated according to principles that are generally applicable uh, in, in one class. The same principles need to apply in another class. Mm -hmm. Now, if a faculty member is investigating what may be, in fact, a, a misuse, but where the student doesn't understand it mm -hmm. to have been an act of dishonesty, then I think a faculty member has full discretion to educate the student. In a sense, uh, that's simply saying acts of academic dishonesty must be intentional to be to be, uh, if they're unintentional, 
Uh, they are not a, uh, an occasion for punishment, um, but for educating the student. And, but I, my own position is that a substantial case of academic dishonesty uh, should require the faculty member to report it because it's a matter of institutional integrity. So we could, Intentional academic dishonesty. Well, it's very hard to uh, determine intent. Um, <clears throat> but I, if we add the word substantial, faculty members shall report all substantial inc all incidents that they consider to be substantial uh, uh, substantial instances of academic dissent, infractions. infractions of academic dishonesty on a faculty report form. That would take care of it. All right, let, let me see if I have it, if, if that's okay, uh, Mr. Ch Chairman. Um, it means you. Yeah, I know, <laughs> I know. The second sentence would go first. So it would begin, a faculty member who suspects that a student has committed a violation of the CUNY academic and integrity policy shall review with the student the facts and circumstances of the suspected violation whenever, po uh, whenever possible. The next sentence would read, if the faculty member concludes in his slash her judgment that there has been a substantial incident of academic dishonesty, the faculty member shall report such incident I'm going to have to play with the, I've got plural and singular mixed up here, um, uh, on a faculty report forms in substantially the same mm -hmm. format, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is that um, acceptable if, to you? Mm -hmm. okay. If people are satisfied yeah, with that, I'm I'll just, work out the plural and singular with the secretary of the board uh, once, once this amendment is approved. Okay. All right. Second. <coughs> okay. Let's move the item. Um, all those We're just this is the amendment. Just the amendment. Just the amendment. As amended. Yeah. Okay. But as amended. I'll move it as amended. Okay. Well, I have another item, so it's just this on amendment. The same, on the same item? On, on the academic integrity. Okay. Well, let's get well, this let's out. So, 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 okay. Let's so, this the, the motion to is to uh, accept the amendment. It's a 3.2. This is on the amendment. Right. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Nays? Abstentions? All right, thank you. On item 4.1, the new 4.1, um, the second paragraph, the language reads, the academic, and this is new, uh, the academic integrity officers should seek disciplinary sanctions only if, one, there is a substantial violation, two, the student had has previously viol uh, violated the policy where three academic sanctions may not be imposed because the student has timely withdrawn from the applicable course. Examples <laughs> of substantial violations include infractions that are similar to criminal activities such as forging a grade form, stealing an examination from a professor or a university office, or forging a transcript, having a substitute take an examination or using an examination for someone else, sabotaging another student's work, through actions designed to prevent the student from su successfully completing an assignment, and violations committed by a graduate or professional student or a student who will seek professional licensure. The college should also consider any mitigating circumstances in making this determination. What troubles me and uh, um, about this is there's no mention of plagiarism or cheating. <coughs> Which is the most common. Right? Which are the most common. And therefore you would in this case like to reduce the discretion? No, I'd like to add cheating and plagiarism. This doesn't allow a faculty member to seek disciplinary sanctions for plagiarism, for plagiarizing a whole paper, a uh, a, a senior thesis for cheating on an exam, copying off of another student, using a PDA to, to get the answers, emailing another student in the class. I mean, none of those activities permit a disciplinary action. 
Well, I don't think that's the case. I, I don't think that's the intent. Uh, and I think the language says include, but obviously it's not limited to these examples. Well, it, 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 so it, it includes criminal, criminal activity. Behavior. Plagiarism is not a criminal activity, as I understand it. You can't bring, you can't indict a person for plagiarism. Or for cheating off another student. Those are not indictable. I'm also not clear on little one, little two, and little three. Is it and or yeah. any one of them, or because there's only one or in front of three? That's true. I think this document needs more work. Quite frankly, I think it should be tabled. <coughs> hmm? It's full of these problems. It really is. <coughs> Well, I think the substance of what of your comment is what's intended. I'm sorry, what? I said I think the substance of your comment is what is intended here. Um, it's just very hard to redraft. Um, I don't think we should do stage. it at the table. I really think this should be tabled and uh, and brought back in September because. There are a lot of these, I only brought up two that have really troubled me and that I asked Professor Weiser to discuss with you. Um, but there are other language problems that are very problematic. And uh, if we can't figure it out, people who have studied this as closely as you have and I have, I don't think that this is ready to go to campuses for implementation. Well, I'm never averse to, to looking at revisions. Um, we normally have a process for this. This process was begun in March of this year. Um, I personally met uh, with the University Faculty Senate uh, in March, uh, sent another draft uh, a week after that meeting, uh, and received no further comments uh, until Professor Weiser called me last week. So I agree that it is not desirable to draft at these meetings but I also think it is not desirable when we have a consultative process, uh, when that consultative process does not result in timely responses. Well, Vice Chancellor Lowe can, I think, attest to the fact that when we had the pre capra meeting, I expressed surprise that it was on the June agenda because I said I hadn't seen it. And I'm sorry that I haven't seen it, but I haven't seen it. Well, I send it and I'll show you the email to the you. president uh, or the chairman of the University Faculty Senate uh, a week after we had our lengthy meeting on the subject in which many of the comments were discussed and, and many revisions were made. Yes, and I know that Professor Wise had brought up these issues, but there was no change. And so I feel an obligation to raise it here. But I, I brought these up to him. He is the one designated to meet with you. No changes occurred. I think this is a serious problem. Rick, let, let, let me make uh, the following <coughs> suggestion. Obviously, there was miscommunication with your group that you're not getting your particular views uh, expressed in a timely way. Rick, is there any time sen sensitivity with respect to this? Uh, must, be, must this be done uh, at this board meeting? Well, look, I... I or can we, uh, over the course of the next couple of weeks before the board meets, mm -hmm. that some redrafting of certain things be done? If the faculty are willing to sit down with Rick and do that, perhaps we could, uh, if these are minor kinds of editorial uh, things, that we could get this done at the board meeting. I'm, I'm sure we could. All right, so why don't we do that? Yeah. We don't have I'd to do this to, here. We could do it after. Okay, okay, so why don't we, why don't we just uh, uh, put this on pause, uh, understanding in the next week or so that there will be every effort made on behalf of whoever at the uh, University Faculty Senate would work with uh, Rick uh, Schaefer to get this done. Okay? Thank you. Great. So there's a motion to table this item. Am yes. I correct? Right? Table yet present to the board. Right. So Who's it's seconding only the, the, uh, <laughs> seconding the table? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, sure. that, is that sure. really tabling? It's, it's really it's a pause. It's a pause. Well, well you're you sort of approving it subject to minor tweaks right. by the faculty representatives. Right. I think we should approve it so the board could right. see it at the end of June. Yes. Okay. Or we could table it and take it off the table at the board meeting at the well, end of what I'm June. Suggesting yes. is, what I'm suggesting is that we go forward with this subject to 
the kinds of revisions that will be made over the next week to 10 days. Okay? Is that, is that all right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Professor Cooper? Yeah, I just would like to say nobody is trying to be obstructionist. This is a very serious matter. A faculty member can be sued and is not represented by anybody, by a student, if there is something in this kind of language which gives the student any grounds for doing so. And believe me, considering the national disaster we have at the moment with plagiarism, which you perhaps are not immediately aware of, but I've been circulating documents for months now about it, um, that it's, uh, it's just a nightmare. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, you know, I don't want to be responsible for handing out a degree which is just useful to cover holes in the world. All right, we'll do the redrafting. Good. Thank you. Okay? Great. Great. Want to go on? Okay. Uh, item number 1B13, Mecca Evers College. Resolution to award honorary degrees at convocation on September 26, 2011. The two, two names down there. Okay, so this is. Um, uh, well, why don't you get it uh, moved? Oh yeah. Oh, oh well, okay. I, I, I see my thing first, and then. Yeah, okay. Let, let me just give the the background <coughs> oh, yeah. on this. This is a new procedure uh, that has been instituted rather quickly because uh, the president of Medgar Evers, through their governance uh, processes, has brought to my attention two people that they would like to honor in, um, through an honorary degree at a convocation in September. I had indicated that when we had the issue at John Jay through the executive committee that I would bring a, another layer of uh, due diligence through bringing honorary degrees to a committee of the board. It seems to me that the appropriate committee of the board is the CAPRA committee. I will be discussing this with the full Council of Presidents later this week, but in the absence of getting through all of that and with the expediency that we would like to, to move with this to entertain the uh, request at uh, Medgar Evers, we would just like to bring it here today. Uh, I don't think there's anything controversial about uh, these two. One is the former president of Brazil, and the other is the current CEO of a very um, important Golden Crust Caribbean Bakery and Grill, who's a, a very prominent businessman uh, in, in this city. A due diligence has been done with respect to both of these candidates, and I don't see any particular problem. Lexa, do you want to go into any more detail? Um, just to say that both of these degrees were recommended by the Megar Evers College Honorary Degrees Committee and were then voted on unanimously and positively by the Megar Evers College Council. I'll move it. Second. Question. Yes. Do, um, when we give an honorary degree to an individual, do we pay their expenses to come to the ceremony? Yes. So, if they request it, unless they're people of means. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just, I'm just wondering, well, I don't know what means the uh, ex-president of Brazil has, but it's just, it's just a question that... Um, I think in general aware. the answer is yes, that if we, um, sure. if, if uh, we do honor somebody, <laughs> we would pay their expenses. Mm. But they may, they may be local, in which case there are no such expenses. Or they may just bear the expenses themselves. Yeah. Yeah. That was our experience most of the time at Yale. I mean, I don't want to be obstructionist. I think <coughs> it's, a, it's, a good, it's a good idea, but it's just that since the uh, each case is coming from Brazil and each case is with expenses, I, I don't know. I, should we not question that? That's, I mean, that, um. does that make sense? Makes sense to put that burden on the college, uh, you know. Given the, I mean, I know how much it costs to go from Brazil to here. Uh, uh, you know, maybe there, there's a, uh, there's another statement that we have there regarding the expense. You know, if a person is coming from China, would that also be the case? I mean, uh, uh, you know, we can be talking anywhere from uh, twelve to. Uh, 
could be fifteen thousand dollars easily. Maybe that's okay. I, I don't know, but the question. I I. Uh... At John Jay, when we had honorary degree recipients who were from other countries, we always paid their airfare and their hotel rooms and so forth, and we've stopped inviting or nominating people from other countries because of the expense. Our budget is quite tight, and we found a lot of very good candidates, uh, very local. Um, but, but that's just uh, John Jay. I don't know what the history is at other colleges. Okay. Any other discussions? <coughs> Let's move the item. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Nays, abstentions? Abstention. Okay. Item number 1B14, resolution on creating Can an... Can you note my abstention? Yes. yes. Abstention noted. Thank you, Trustee. Vice Chair. Uh, resolution on creating an efficient uh, transfer system. Okay. Um, CAPRA members, today you have before you a, a <clears throat> historic resolution. For over 40 years, CUNY undergraduates have struggled with having their course credits transfer when they move from one CUNY campus to another. This has been the case for courses they have taken as part of their general education and as part of their major requirements, as well as for elective courses. All too often, our students have received elective credit for courses they had taken as part of general education or as major courses, even when they did not change majors when transferring. And sometimes they have not received credit at all. This is because in most cases, transfer credit at CUNY has operated on a course matching system. Courses taken at Campus A receive credit at Campus B if Campus B judges that it has a course that matches the course at Campus A. This is the principle behind the TIP system, otherwise known as Transfer Information and Program Planning System, the software that faculty and staff have worked so hard to populate with assessments of whether or not, not courses will transfer with credit. Because of delays in getting their transfer credits evaluated and because of frequent assessments that courses do not match, students have taken the wrong courses and or had to retake courses and or take additional courses resulting in longer times to complete coursework and lack of coverage of all courses by financial aid, two factors that are known to decrease the probability of a student ever graduating, as well as increasing the cost of an education to students, the city, and the state. For many decades, the minutes of meetings of the CUNY Board of Trustees, of the CUNY Administration, and of CUNY faculty governance bodies have regularly contained evidence of valiant attempts to address the problems faced by CUNY transfer students. New York State education law considers CUNY to be a single university and directs CUNY to have easy transfer among its colleges. Yet a variety of research studies and policies have failed to resolve the issues facing our transferring undergraduates. Now, in 2011, we find that huge proportions of our students are transferring, typical of what is going on across the United States, but perhaps even more frequent at CUNY due to the close physical proximity of our campuses. Last fall alone, approximately 10,000 of our undergraduates transferred from one CUNY campus to another. And at every one of our senior, <coughs> senior colleges, over 50% of the graduates are now transfer students. The typical student at each of our senior colleges is no longer the student who starts at that college as a freshman and graduates from that college. The typical student at our senior colleges is a transfer student, and we must ensure that these students have the same clear and efficient pathways to graduation as do the students who do not transfer. Articulation agreements have proven of great worth to the pairs of colleges that have established them and high quality academic advising is also critical. However, with CUNY students transferring between all possible pairs of colleges, with over 700 undergraduate majors, and over 23,000 undergraduate courses, with admission standards at senior colleges constantly increasing, and with articulation agreements sometimes taking years to establish and becoming out of date as soon as one of the colleges changes one course, Articulation agreements are not a viable method for assisting the majority of our students with transfer, and even the most skilled advisor can be stymied by the CUNY transfer maze. 
It is time for CUNY to take comprehensive action to break down these barriers for our students, to respect our students' right to transfer seamlessly among the different campuses of our single university according to their needs and interests, though subject to the admission standards of the different colleges. It is also time to recognize, indeed celebrate, the many thousands of wonderful CUNY faculty who have done outstanding work on the curriculum of individual courses, of programs, and of degrees. We need to build on that work, including the particular curricular needs, interests, and traditions of the individual campuses. Faculty knowledge and creativity and campus individuality and flexibility are foundational to a strong CUNY. With all of these principles in mind, the resolution before you now addresses transfer credit issues in terms of the three main parts of any undergraduate curriculum, general education, major, and electives. The first part concerns general education courses, with the resolution establishing a general education framework for all of CUNY, one that will prepare students for lifelong learning and intellectual success. The general education framework itself consists of two parts the Common Core and the College Option. The Common Core will consist of 30 credits that will apply to all AA, AS, and baccalaureate students. These 30 credits will be divided into curricular areas defined according to learning outcomes by a task force consisting predominantly of faculty. Each college's faculty will then submit its choice of courses to satisfy these learning outcomes. The college option will comprise an additional 12 credits of general education for baccalaureate students, for a total of 42 general education credits for baccalaureate students, a bit high compared to national norms, with the college option courses determined by the faculty at the individual baccalaureate colleges. Students who satisfy any part of the general education framework at any college will be deemed to have satisfied that part at all CUNY colleges. In addition, to ensure that associate degree students do not have to take significant numbers of general education courses in the latter part of their college careers when they should be focusing on their majors and electives, the number of college option credits that a student transferring from an associate to a baccalaureate program must take will be limited according to how many total credits that student has accumulated at the time of transfer. The second part of the resolution concerns major courses. In order to ensure that students can begin a major at any CUNY college and then transfer seamlessly in that same major to any other CUNY college, faculty from across CUNY will convene and decide on the first three to six courses that lead into the largest transfer majors. The third part of the resolution concerns electives. A student's electives taken at any CUNY college will transfer with full credit to any other CUNY college. The resolution contains provisions for students transferring to a CUNY college from outside of CUNY as well. The specifics of this resolution have been significantly shaped and refined by unprecedented discussion and consultation <coughs> among members of the CUNY community, involving some 70 meetings between representatives of the central administration and of the campuses since last October, posting of all types of information on a public website, newsletter articles, a webinar open to all, and an opportunity for CUNY community members to submit their comments electronically, an opportunity taken by about 550 people. With this resolution, the special role of the faculty in determining curriculum will be preserved, and colleges will have considerable flexibility and individuality. At the same time, the rights of students to transfer and have their course credits transfer with them will be protected. Students will have clear general education and major pathways, no matter at which campus they start and at which campus they finish. Further, given the predominant role of the faculty in all of this work, with faculty from all over CUNY working together, standards will not only be maintained, but will be increased. It is time for CUNY to break with its long history of putting barriers in front of transfer students' graduation goals. It is time for CUNY to respect all of its faculty and to ask them to work together across campuses for the betterment of all CUNY students. It is time for there to be clear, faculty-defined, high-standard, efficient educational pathways for the CUNY undergraduate body. It is time to vote in favor of this resolution. Okay. I'll move it. Second. Second. Discussions? 
I have a document I'd like to uh, um, circulate, please. There's another document also. Do what do you do? We need more. It's the same, but more copies. The two documents that are being uh, distributed, one is a set of resolutions from all the senior colleges but one, and several of the community colleges, as well as other groups, including the National Association of Scholars and Phi Beta Kappa National Office, um, in response to and in objection to the uh, proposed resolution, the proposed policy, as it is stated here today. The shorter document is uh, from the University Faculty Senate which voted unanimously to um, authorize me to move these proposals. And uh, so I'd like to uh, walk you through the document. Items that are text that uh, has a, a strikeout are to be deleted and underlined to be added. So the proposal is uh, starts on page two in terms of proposed changes. We're proposing four more credits than is being proposed uh, for the general education. So instead of 42, that would be 46. And so um, accordingly, uh, adjustments would have to be made in other items. We would like in the second page, the second uh, the statement, all CUNY undergraduates will be required to complete the 30 credit common core. We think it's important to say with a grade of C or better. The, the uh, the courses would transfer for credit, but as transfer for being the equivalent of um, and meeting the requirements of uh, the general education um, curriculum at another college, we think that there should be a grade of C or better in that course, since these are usually prerequisites to other courses. So if it's math, if it's calculus, and we're talking about you know upper level calculus, the students should have at least a C or better. Um, and the other major recommendation or, or proposal is that the faculty members of the task force that Vice Chancellor Loke spoke about and of the steering committee that Vice Chancellor Loke spoke about and of uh, subcommittees, uh, which will have, as the policy says, um, a, a membership that uh, comprises a dominant uh, um, membership of faculty, that those faculty be nominated by the University Faculty Center to be appointed by the Chancellor. Uh, curriculum is always, you know, faculty responsibility and prerogative, and we think that it's very important that, in effect, we're creating a university-wide curriculum committee. At every college, the curriculum committee is picked by the faculty of that um, College, the department reps are elected by the faculty members of those departments. This is now uh, basically a university-wide 
curriculum committee that's being proposed. And we think that the faculty governance body, which is the university faculty, uh, university faculty senate, be the body to recommend the faculty. They would be nominated by, actually appointed by the chancellor. Um, and so presidents could um, recommend to the university faculty, senate faculty. They, the presidents could and provosts could recommend to faculty that they put their names forward to the university faculty, senate. We would carefully vet the, the qualifications of those faculty and recommend them to the chancellor. We want this and every, every policy having to do with curriculum and academic standards to be successful at the university. And this is our contribution and an essential one. And it would um, honor the historic role of faculty in terms of uh, being in charge of curriculum. So I would like to move these amendments in total. And if you'd like to discuss any individually, um, that would be fine. Who made the motion? I made the motion. And I'm moving to amend. A question? Uh, about mm -hmm. when you discussed the, uh, the faculty members submitting it to the chancellor, you said the president or provost will mm -hmm. submit it to the faculty. No, I'm saying that if the provost or president of a college would like to recommend certain faculty, they would recommend them to the university oh, but faculty. But the so. university faculty doesn't have to consider that recommendation. We would consider it. I mean, but we wouldn't be bound it. to, uh, to yeah. send it forward. It would be the same way that in presidential searches for presidents of colleges, the faculty at, each, at the college that's involved recommends to the chancellor the faculty members to be um, uh, on the search committee and the chancellor appoints them. The chancellor could reject those people. Uh, in the same way we would be recommending to the chancellor the faculty members, he could reject them and ask for more names. I hate to interrupt your situation. Is, uh, is the, Can is I just make a point? Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, just a point, Philip. In order for sure. discussion of these right. amendments okay. to be uh, legitimate, the motion to make the amendments needs to be seconded. That's right. And then, and then discussion. Yet. So I have not, Is I don't know if there's a second. Surely there'll, the be, surely there'll be a second. Well, it won't be me. I second. Okay. Open for so discussion. We can have discussion. So therefore, uh, Mr. Chairman, my question are in the other situations mm -hmm. of uh, the um, select presidential searches, mm -hmm. those are appointed not from the faculty senate, they're not recommended from the faculty senate to the chancellor, right? They're recommended by the faculty of that college because it's a local issue. Yeah, right. But they're recommended to the chancellor, and he appoints them. And this would be analogous on a university level. Let me uh, oh, go ahead. Well, I'm not terribly sure that this is such an outrageous suggestion, because according to the charter of the senate, the university faculty senate shall have primary responsibility to university-level educational and instructional matters and research and scholarly activities of university-wide import. Mm -hmm. And um, over the many years I've had anything to do with this body, this has not become an area of clash. It's worked. We have recommended and seen the appointment of the people that have reviewed the PSC CUNY grants. Mm -hmm. Um, we have overseen the CUNY baccalaureate degree, which is university-wide. We have undertaken to participate in the shaping of the new community college. And in the uh, School of Professional Studies, we have membership on the governing board because these are programs that are not confined to a campus. And if we're dealing now with a university-wide curriculum, I personally don't have a problem with that idea at all, contrary to what might be the vision around here. I will also just add as a fact, which seems to not be in any of the documents, that when this was first proposed, I invited the governance leaders of every college to send in the names to, the com to us um, of faculty on that campus who worked in general education on their campus. 
we had about 12 hours of meetings at which the vice chancellor was present, I believe, at one. And in those 12 hours of meetings, I wish to state categorically there was no friction between the community and senior college faculty, contrary to the miserable publicity which has been put out. I'd like to disagree with that statement. Well, at the meeting I was at, a faculty member said, I hear that the senior colleges um, are not interested in honoring the courses from the community colleges. And, um, and then everybody said no, but the issue was raised and I did feel tension in the room. Well, I'm sorry, but I had those meetings go on and on and every single two-year faculty, community college faculty member who participated in those things has indicated a willingness to work on this. And the senior college faculty who participated at the conference, which we did have in, on April 29th, indicated that if necessary, we could increase the membership of the community college faculty to reflect that. I really don't believe it is right to exploit this as a faculty game, a split, and that is what has happened. I spent a year trying to avoid that, and I thought I was fairly successful. Moreover, I have public statements from heads of discipline councils, which include two and four year faculty, that that isn't the case. The uh, purpose of, of attempting to modify this is to make the faculty feel less jittery that something is going to be imposed on them that violates their sense of professional responsibility. We are not a high school. Trustee the Shorter? curriculum does not come from the central office. A basic question, and this is, mm -hmm. this is relatively minor in terms of language, but in terms of all the research, is there a problem of requiring a minimum grade of C? Is that a critical issue? I, you know, I think, oh, oh do you want to respond? Yeah, let, let me, uh, I, I think I'd, I'd like to dispose of this uh, amendment by, by saying that I like the idea of a C or better. I, I don't have any real problem with that, and uh, I, I think that is very consistent with what I'm going to say after we dispose of this amendment one way or the other. Well, I would uh, like to... I'll uh, consider that a friendly amendment. Okay? Yes. I move the, the original. And so that means that the original motion now includes the language about the C or better. I would like to strongly uh, disagree with upping the credits, and I will talk about that after, my, uh, uh, after we finish on, on debating the amendment to the resolution. Uh, I think 42 is too high right now. It is, it is out of whack relative to the rest of the United States, and I will talk about that in just a minute. So going from 42, the chart. 42 to 46, uh, it, it, I think, just places us even in, in more of a, uh, a tale of the distribution of what is going on across the United States. So I, I think that uh, that is something that I could not uh, support as well. Remember, what we're doing here is a framework, nothing more than a framework. The, the work begins uh, really honestly and forcefully uh, once we get all of the faculties together. Uh, I intend to very much work with the University Faculty Senate as we have over the years. I don't think that th there's going to be any change in looking for recommendations from the University Faculty Senate, and we always have and we've always entertained recommendations. What I don't want to be is hamstrung <coughs> by really just looking only at the University Faculty Senate. There are many other faculty groups throughout the university uh, faculties that have petitioned me directly that once you get going, we really would like to be part of this. Uh, for example, I, I had a conversation just the other day with the head of the, um, uh, the, CUNY, uh, the CUNY uh, Scholars Association, uh, Dorothy Lang, who would like to be part of this, and I will be talking to her as well. So while the University Faculty Senate is going to play a very important role, as they should, it should not be the only faculty group 
in the university from which we would like to see talent and experience and skill uh, in helping us navigate through these very, very difficult discussions. So I would suggest that the board accepts the friendly amendment of a C or better, but really rejects the others. Uh, certainly the credits to me are uh, irresponsible. And uh, with respect to the, the faculty senate being the primary body from which recommendations come, uh, I think they will be an important body, but certainly not the only body. And then I think we ought to call this. Okay. Uh, yeah. In, um, in the history of the last 10 years or so, uh, whenever there's a university-wide uh, task force or body where there are faculty, we have, as the University Faculty Senate, been asked to name someone, right. at the most two. Two from the University Faculty Senate out of perhaps 30 members. Other faculty chosen by the provosts and the, and, the, and the presidents. That's a very small percentage given that we are the official voice of the faculty of the university, so stated in the bylaws of this board of trustees. I'd like to amend my own motion, remove the issue of the credits because I know that there's no, going to be no movement on that. Um, we've raised it over and over. Even though the faculty at, at every college in CUNY just about um, feels that our students need as broad a range of, of courses to prepare them for the upper level courses. And you don't want me to remove it? I won't. No, no, no. Um, I'm, I'm I, I, the there's word. political realities. And um, I, I, I changed, point. I'd like to amend the issue of appointing of uh, the University Faculty Senate's role of naming people that the University Faculty Senate recommend 50% of the members of the task forces, the steering committee, and the subcommittees. I don't consider that a friendly amendment, so if you want to move that. I move that. Let's see if there's a second, and if there is, we can discuss it and vote on it. Well, the fix is in. Well, Mr. Chairman, I don't hear a second, so I don't think that amendment So we can't discuss it because no one will second it? Okay. Well, you can discuss it because the, the thing that exists calls for consultation with the, with the Senate, so the role of the Senate is, is at issue and so forth. We feel free to discuss it. On the merits, I completely agree with the Chancellor's view that, that it should be consultation, but that the Senate should not have a lock on, on every person who, who can be considered, because there are other sources of, of um, useful, for yeah. example, a student Senate should be uh, consulted oh, about. Oh, well, that's called so, for in so, the, in the so document. So I think the Faculty Senate's role here is in conjunction with the university the Council of Presidents and the Student Senate, as to be one of con consulting with the Chancellor. It doesn't limit you at all in the num number of faculty that you can recommend. The Chancellor can choose your nom your recommendations or consider as many as he likes. But the history is, uh, is that we've never been invited to recommend more than Karen, one or two. Karen, we will work very closely with the Senate. Uh, you have my pledge on that. I'm not playing a numbers game here. I'm not trying to game this at all. I think we all are Neither moving are. in this. And I know that you're not either. So let's, let's do even better than we have in the past. But to constrain by a, a fixed number or percentage, I don't think is really a responsible way to go. I have a, besides the Senate, which may strike some of you as an irrelevant body, we have 12 discipline councils that function. Mm -hmm. We have a 50 member ad hoc general education committee. <coughs> it's more than, the, not, not the same people as in the Senate. They're different. They're people with specialized knowledge of general education. 
it's not exactly an effort to stack the deck. I simply want the facts known that there exists at this point a considerable number of cross-campus groups that have been meeting and working together. And in those groups, I've attended seven or so meetings. I have not seen war between the community and senior college faculty. Nobody is I have words. not seen a, dis, a disrespect for courses, which has been published in the Daily News editorial and somebody is feeding all this junk out. Uh, and I'm, I'm really, and I happen to be somebody who has taught in a college which has two-year students, four-year students, master's students, and I taught at the, and I teach in the doctoral program. I've been across the whole gamut of it. There are differences, Mr. and that's it. Mr. Well, Chairman, yes. we, we, well, the, the well, debate is over on the amendment is except is for the, uh, there, there's not been a second, and right. I think we right. really have, have to one move important, on. May I? Yes. Yeah. On page four, uh, there are well, a, Corey is a point of Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see Corey. <clears throat> it was on an earlier um, motion that was made to include the, with the greater seat or better. Was there a second to that? Yes. That was accepted as a friendly amendment. It's a friendly amendment. It's a friendly amendment. Do you? I do find issue with that um, that exception. I, I don't think students actively seek to get lower than a C in their class. I don't think. I mean, I think that's no student is actively seeking that. I understand the need to um, try and create a culture to have high standards, but I don't think that would be that's necessary. I think the proposal as it is is fine uh, without the, that inclusion or any of the other inclusions that were proposed. Well, I accepted it as a friendly motion, and uh, so if you want to move that it be struck, go ahead. That, that would be the Almost every procedure. College has I mean, the student gets credit even if he doesn't have a C. It right. just only doesn't get credit for having satisfied the Common Core, and it, which makes sense because the Common Core sometimes acts in effect as a prerequisite or, or exactly. a foundation on a transfer course. he only doesn't get credit yeah. on a transfer right. otherwise he gets credit right. he gets credit toward his degree but not toward satisfying the common core requirements okay. for general, uh, general education that's, that's you know, a, yeah sorry. yeah a um, couple of things one is um, I've been informed that there may be financial aid issues with not transferring C or D courses um, a second issue is um, I think that the intent behind this resolution is that if something counts at one college, it counts at another college. And so, some, some C's don't transfer some, now. Some C's C's don't transfer, period. They or, or they don't, they don't but they don't transfer now. There is already in the resolution um, a yes. statement. Yeah, there already is, to an extent consistent with grade requirements and residency rules at the transfer colleges. That's already in there. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. It's the fifth okay. result so from so the it's end. Not result. Yeah, okay. so it's not clear that something else is needed. Okay. okay. So we'll so we'll on we'll last comment, right. please. So we'll say yes. that the okay. 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 original. Okay. Okay. Aaron, you have the last. Yes, okay. on page four, the very last result, there's... Um, a proposed amendment that I hope can be accepted as a friendly amendment, and that is that these evaluations that will take place every year for uh, three years, beginning in 2013 and then every three years after, be actually put on the agenda of CAPRA so that we can discuss the findings. I will talk to that, and, and I will, I will uh, accede to that. That was the intent all along. And I think once we get this done, there should be about a three-year window of seeing how this process works with a full report to me that I will bring to the board and if action is required as a result of our experience, then appropriate changes would be made. And that, that will be put into the document when it's brought to the board. That's very good to hear. Let's call the question on the amendments. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Nays? Abstentions? Carries. Nay. Oh, you have one nay. Yes. Okay. On the resolution itself? You no, said the, the amendment. amendment. The amendment. What amendment? What amendment? No, no, we didn't oh, accept no, no, it. There's no amendment. There are no amendments. We're calling the question. We're calling the question, the the question as, as it was. Yeah. Because calling it was, the question on the amendments, right. amendments right. and those were not approved. Right. 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 Okay. So we just Let's call the question again on the original 
uh, uh, res resolution. resolution. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Nays? Nay. One. Abstention? None. Okay. <clears throat> Motion carries. Without the amendment. Without the amendment. That's yeah. correct. Okay. Item number two, information item, CUNY School of Law and Center for Urban Environmental Reform. Okay, the CUNY School of Law is submitting its resolution on the Center on Urban Environmental Reform, CUER, for board approval via this month's Chancellor's University Report. In accordance with standard practice, this item is also being presented for information to CAPRA. The main goals of the proposed center will be producing research on urban environmental justice and converting that research into policy tools useful to planners, policymakers, and advocates. The center will institute a fellowship program for students interested in working on environmental decision making and host an annual speaker series. Center activities will also support development of classes on environmental law and policy. A modest annual budget is projected to organize regular conferences and workshops and so on and will be supported through outside grants. Okay. Um, uh, so that's just the information. Right. right, and then the report by you. Okay, this will be brief. There are just two information items that I'd like to present to CAPRA members. First is an update on our enrollment for this coming fall. Um, in terms of admissions, we are up in freshman admissions by almost 6%, but most of the increase is at the comprehensive and community colleges. Transfer admissions is ahead of last year, but again, it is not even across the board. The senior colleges are flat overall. Community colleges are way ahead of last year uh, by a total of 54%. Some of these increases um, are the result of higher, the increases at the community and comprehensive colleges are the result of higher standards at the most selected senior colleges. And the fact that those colleges are no longer taking conditional admits. Those are undergraduates who need some remediation and must address those needs before enrolling in September. This may mean that the show rate, which is the percentage of accepted students who actually enroll, may be down this year because fewer students are being accepted to their first choice CUNY college, and so be more likely to end up enrolling in a non-CUNY college. In terms of enrollment, we appear to be several thousand ahead of the same point last year, but it's still really too early to make an accurate assessment of that. The second information item that I wanted to report to you is at um, later today at the board's faculty, staff, and administration meeting. I am pleased to tell you that five scholars will be considered for the rank of distinguished professor, which is CUNY's highest faculty rank. These five scholars are Paul Adwell, who is um, presently a professor at the Graduate School and uh, <coughs> University Center. Um, Peter Godfrey Smith, who is coming to CUNY from Harvard's Department of Philosophy. Um, he's an internationally renowned scholar in the philosophy of biology and the philosophy of the mind. I should also add that Professor Adwell is a nationally and internationally recognized scholar in the sociology of education, who's highly regarded for his work on inequality and stratification and on the social impact of information technology. <coughs> the third one is David Sorkin, who comes to CUNY from the University of Wisconsin-Madison, where he is the Francis and Lawrence Weinstein Professor of Jewish Studies and Professor of History. He's recognized as a renowned scholar of modern Jewish history, and it, he is an eminent European intellectual historian. The fourth is Peter Kwong, who's been at Hunter College since 1993. He plays a leading role in several social science disciplines. He's a major figure in the emerging discipline of Asian American studies. And the fifth is uh, Parameswaran Nair, who has worked at City College since 1993. Um, and he um, is, has achieved an exceptionally high level of success and prominence for his theoretical work in high energy physics with forays into mathematical physics. His most recent work is related to the Casimir effect. I'm sure everybody knows what that is. Charlie, you know what that is. We were just were discussing it the other day. Chancellor, you'd like to make a statement? Yes, uh, I would like uh, to make a statement um, uh, at, at the end of this um, important meeting. And I, I really just want to congratulate all of us uh, in taping, taking this very important step forward. Uh, 
I know there are many students here today and uh, know that uh, so much of our work is really directed to giving you the very best experience that you can without uh, unnecessary uh, impedances built in, into the system. I would like to just spend a moment of your time to commend uh, our Executive Vice Chancellor and uh, University Provost, uh, Lexa Logue. Uh, she has comported herself in a way that I think all of us can be proud. This is a woman of the greatest uh, professionalism, a woman of great dignity, of great intellect. I would put her academic record side by side of the best of the faculty we have uh, in, in this university. She has been fair, she's listened, uh, she's moderated her positions, uh, over this very long, arduous ta uh, time. And she's done this even with a threat levied in her direction. She has stayed focused and refused to participate in theatrical moves while understanding that she could still face a blemish on her impeccable career. I was deeply, deeply offended by uh, what uh, was transmitted to some members of the CAPRA committee with respect to this. And I will tell you, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, that not a, even a threat of extortion will allow this professional from doing the right thing for our students. I think we owe a debt of great gratitude for her steadfastness, her sense of fairness, propriety. Uh, we are fortunate to have somebody of this extraordinary accomplishments uh, within our midst. I'd like to make that a resolution. If there is a second, the second. committee second. would resolve its appreciation for her great work uh, on this gen on this uh, student, this issue which is so critical to our students' progress. And I thought the statement that she deserves a vote of no confidence was not just wildly inaccurate, but was actually shameful, a shameful way to treat an academic colleague who is simply doing her job. And uh, I found it deeply offensive, as did the Chancellor. And I must say, as a chair, I have the pleasure to serve for many years on this ch uh, chair now. And I, I find that uh, Lexa Lowe is one of the most professional, cordial, uh, um, delight to work with in the last few years. And, and I, I second that. Mr. Chairman, also, I, I just want to say that um, 30, 30 years ago, I uh, graduated from uh, Borough of Manhattan College, Community College, to go to Queens College. And uh, the issue that uh, the Executive Vice Chancellor has tackled, you know, is, a, is an issue that has been on the plates for 30 years and talked about, and nobody has taken the action that she has taken. And so I really commend her for tackling this. I remembered when we talked about this last year, uh, and, and I just feel that the professionalism that she has brought and the diligence to this has just been uh, incredible. And the quickness of that this has uh, happened. And, you know, there are certainly are questions, but, uh, but I, I just feel that uh, she has done a stellar job with this. Uh, it's, uh, it's something that later in the annals of our university, uh, you know, what will, will be remembered is that we did this, that we moved forward with this, and, and that's what's, that is what is important. I should, Eric, I joined you there. I still have four credits sitting at Queens College. I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> I worked hard. I got an A for it. <laughs> okay, right. All right. Um, um, motion. Thank you, everybody. There is, there there is a, a motion on the table. Vote on the resolution. Oh, yes, that's right. Oh, yes. Aye. 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 All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Nays? Thank you. unanimous. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very